Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. We are still working on the X5 because it has a lot of problems. I'm honestly not used to having so many problems on one particular car, but that's a 20 year old car that hasn't really been serviced. I believe this is almost going to be a little bit trickier than the 550 over there, which was scratched. But at least you replace it anyway, and you know what's damaged here with this one. There's so many little gremlins like the mirrors, and then it was the AC, and who knows what's next. I also just installed a new radio and new head unit. And while that is working, all the extra stuff that came with it, like the dash cam, is not working. The wireless Apple CarPlay, it's not working. Still sorting through things, waiting on tech support. In the meantime, today we're gonna go under the hood again to install this thing here. And this is, as you know, a auxiliary water pump. That's for the water heater. So why heat does work, this one doesn't work. And I'm telling you why I decided that it's not working. We just have um, a couple of part numbers somewhere here in case. So I'm changing this auxiliary water pump because I believe it's broken. I haven't had any code throw up or anything like that. What I had is that once I got the car, the climate control unit was dead. So you couldn't turn on the fan, you couldn't adjust temperature, completely dead. And that is because the fuse was blown. The fuse 48 in the glove box, top row, somewhere in the position seven or so, doesn't matter. You have a little diagram in there, you can find it. It's a seven and a half amp fuse and that kept blowing. And I put in three fuses and that fuse kept blowing. I changed it, started the car up two or three times and it was gone again. So I did some research and apparently it comes down to your heater water cycle. So if you look in here, this is the 4.4 E53, the 2003. You have your valves here and the auxiliary water pump is down there. I'm going to show you in a moment. But what happens is if the heater is on, it wants to push water, right, circulate water from the engine, warm water, through the heater valves, back to the heater, so you have warm air inside. But if this pump is broken or about to break and just dead, it will just take so much energy to start, to get going, that it pops the fuse. And it kept popping again and again. So how you narrow it down that it's dead, you just go down, you have to access it from the rear well, in this case, just take the wheel off, you take some screws out, you can get access to the connector because the connector is underneath, it's on the underside. Once I disconnected that, it wouldn't pop anymore. Since then, the climate control is working fine, no problems whatsoever, so pump is done. Also what happened, since I had to change the radiator at that time, um, I couldn't really bleed the system properly because to bleed it, you have to also turn on your heater, maximum heat, lowest fan setting to let the pump push out the air through the heating circle. But that didn't happen. So I believe I have some air in there and it just triggers, you know, coolant temperature warnings and so on, which is not ideal. So today I'm going to change that. Not sure how, I've never done that before. Can't be that complicated. Looking at the part, I know you have two hoses. Those are connected with the standard these couplings here, you just pull the plug or you just pull the spring out and then you can put it off. There's one at the top, one at the side and you connect at the bottom. That's one of those spring loaded um, clips. How do we have one here? Here, just like this one. You gotta push the spring in and then you can put it off. You have to disconnect it from the bottom. There's no way you get to it from the front. Not only 4.4 E53 and then it's loose. That's the easy part. Getting it out will be a little trickier. Let me show you where we're living here. So where is it? Down there. There it is. That's sitting. You know, we see this snake pipe going down there. And where this connector looks clean, that's the pump. A little bit tricky to get it on. And it is just sitting on a rubber mount that connects to the, yeah, to the little piece of frame there. Are we getting it off there? Either it just wiggles out. I have to see. So first I get the car up a little bit on the one side here so I can take the wheel off. Maybe just make some space, take the wheel liner out. The front wheel liner only, don't need to take it completely out. To get access down there, make sure I'm gonna hide the connector. Gonna take a catch can underneath for the water that comes out. Gonna disconnect the water hoses and then the pump is by itself. And then I just got to wiggle it out somehow. I might also, to make some space, 
um, remove the bracket here. You have one, two, three, ten millimeter, and then it is hooked in here. Just have to lift it over, and then this entire assembly gives you a little bit wiggle room. You can move it a little bit to the side to have a little bit more space down there to work with and fiddle around. So with the wheel out of the way, you have one, two, three, four, eight millimeter. You just take those out and that gives you enough space to get in here and access the pump from there. At the same time, we're going to remove this under tray. It's a bunch of 10 and eight millimeter. Um, because we will lose water, I don't want to catch it in there, or I'll have it controlled. So let me try to show you this. Sneak in here. And this is... You can see it, there's the pump sitting in there. This is the connector, connects down here. You can only access it from the bottom, but whatever, it's not that hard to get to. And then you see the hose on top. I'm gonna remove both hoses from the top and then it appears to just sit in this rubber block. So what you've just seen as I explained, I made space here. Move this out of the way. I disconnected the uh, negative, and I will have, we'll have to clean this up a little bit. It's kind of filthy. Don't bother with this one here because you have to disconnect this hose anyway. Whatever. Just keep it clean as much on top as you can. The top one is easy to take off. You just slide off the clamp, put it up top. Easy peasy. For the side one here. Um, you have to take something angled to get the clamp off because the clamp pulls forward. And once that's done, you just gotta be a man and just wiggle your arms and just put it apart. It does come off. Big pry bar, as you see, and didn't do it for me. So that is that. Pump is all disconnected. And now I just have to get it out. So as it is, it's actually a lot easier and faster than I thought it would be because of the position where it is and everything. Now the new pump is in. Once you connect the hoses and the connector, it, do the connector first, then the hoses. And then you just have to wiggle it out, put it out, wiggle it a little bit. It is just held by a rubber mounting. It just slides in way easier than I feared it would be. So that's great. The new one slides right in. Connectors pop right on. Now I'm going to dry it a little bit and lower it. I'm not going to put a wheel on yet. I just want it to be even as it were, and, you know, standing normal on the ground. And then we still have to bleed the system because we did lose quite a lot of it. The bleeding procedure, as mentioned before, open here, that's the easy part. You have to fill, of course. You also open this one here. Take uh, the biggest flathead that you have this is a plastic screw, super sensitive, and when tightening it, you don't have to tighten it a lot. It doesn't hold anything. And you fill it until it comes up. You don't start the engine, but you will start then the ignition and put the heat on both sides all the way up, the fan speed to the lowest setting, and that should then activate your pump, and that should fluff out the rest.
the bubble stop coming, you put the vent screw on again, just slightly, and then you turn the ignition on. As soon as that happens, your pump starts running, and you can see the stream here coming out, right? This now goes down here and beats out there. If you don't close this first, it's just gonna all drop out here. So you really want that. Heat is all the way up. Um, fan on the low stage. Now just gonna wait for a minute or two, let it do its thing. This is pretty much a self bleeding of the heater circle. And once I had enough of this, you put it on. You, you put it on. We start the car up. Did the actual main water pump one to maybe flush out some air that may still be somewhere in the main system, and then it should be good. In the meantime, have a peek into this pump here. This nasty thing. Can you see anything? See that? Kind of gross. I'm positive that that fixed my fuse 48 problem. And since it's bleeded properly, then also my overheating problem. It's not really, I don't think it's technically overheating. I just think there is some air in the system. Because as I would drive along, the temperature would suddenly increase sharply. And depending on your driving situation, sometimes you brake and suddenly the temperature drops three, four degrees Celsius, which temperature doesn't warm or cool that quickly. I believe there was an air bubble somewhere in the system and now I'm getting rid of it. So now I just let it run until it warms up and until the thermostat opens. You notice it opens, once the radiator here turns hard, then you know engine is warm, wants to cool more, opens the big circle, it's gonna push out all the air that's still in the system. So you let it run until it's warm, until you can feel that your radiator is warm. That's when you know the water runs fine. And you do not open to check. It literally says on there, check when cold. Cold, cold. It's pretty hot right now. And then that's it. Once, if my climate control module stays on and the fuse doesn't shoot anymore, then this issue was fixed. And I also assume it will stop to show me overheating. But for that, I have to let it cool down first, check the level again. And then I take it for a drive. Maybe I drive it first, let it cool down later, check the level later. Anyway, this is how you change your auxiliary water pump on a E53 with the M62. It's the 4.4 liter V8. I felt the need to make this video because I couldn't find any. The only one I found on the E53 was on a 3.0i. The layout is different. The pump sits on the six cylinder, the pump sits somewhere down there as you see it's there it's not that far apart but we have way more space to work on it so now for all the v8 guys there you go fix it if you need if your climate control and your fuse 48 keeps popping check this unplug it and see if it stops popping the fuse and then you know what to do i think cost wise the pump i think was somewhere around 120. um i got it off of fcpu dead We're done for the day thanks for watching and i'm gonna see you in one of the older or upcoming videos on the channel take care guys